what's going on guys this is Ryan with the RK Outpost and it's the same thing over and over again in Hollywood in the entertainment industry they take these IPs that people love and instead of telling the stories that those people are there for instead of telling the stories and respecting the characters and the lore that actually grew this fan base instead what they do is they take a franchise they take an IP and they change it to be what they want it, what the activists want it to be they push identity politics and in doing so they guarantee their own failure because now not only do you have a product that so many people are going to be turned off to because of the messaging but also the entire reason that fans are there the entire reason they care about that thing is now gone because you've made it very clear that you don't care about what came before and you're going to do your own thing that's exactly the story with Halo as reviews are starting to come out it doesn't look good from a critical standpoint critics score sitting at 60 percent but of course a lot of us don't really care what the critics think we're looking to see what the audience thinks and this comes out about a week from now I guess we'll see from the people that are still actually holding out hope for this Halo series however what we are hearing from the creators themselves is not very good Halo showrunner Stephen Kane says the writing team quote didn't look at or talk about the game we talked about the characters and the world so the main reason why any singular person cares about Halo is because of the video game because of the story that is told in this video game but we didn't look at that for any inspiration. In fact, we decided we're going to do our own thing completely. What a surefire way to tell the audience, the people who do care about it because it says Halo, to go fuck themselves. And not only that, but it seems like the bait and switch that we've all been waiting for has already been confirmed. Halo TV series to completely change Master Chief's character, focus on Quan Ah for human perspective. But let's start with the first one, the showrunners talking about this series the red flags continue to fly for paramount plus upcoming halo series as a recent interview uh, with showrunner stephen kane has revealed that despite penning over 265 drafts of the live action adaptation he and the writing team did not look or talk about the original games in any capacity now if you are familiar with halo with the games there are some other things like books to draw from there are books that describe a series of events that occur outside of the games you can definitely look at that for some background but the question is why uh, if if this series the reason people care about the name halo is because of the games why would you not use those why would you not use the very thing and tell the story that people are familiar with and of course it's because they can't do what they want with it they can't have all these characters that they want they can't have maybe the identity politics they can't have master chief behave they want master chief to behave if they were actually to follow the lore so they've created an alternative timeline kane revealed during the halo's writer room proud ignorance of master chief's original video game outings during a recent interview speaking with the trade outlet he said we didn't look at the game we didn't talk about the game we talked about the characters and the world so i never felt limited by it being a game turning to the topic of master chief himself the showrunner asserted he's everybody right he's you he's me he's a six-year-old girl he's a 15 year old person in a different country whoever plays the game is him we're going to tell a story about a man discovering his own humanity in so doing he's invited the audience to discover that guy's humanity too although it, it is true that you know when you step into the video game you are playing that person it's not a six-year-old right it's not a random 15 year old in a different country it, you are playing through the eyes of master chief you become master chief you are becoming the character of master chief master chief doesn't become whoever you are it's a, a pretty important part maybe if you actually knew anything about the games you'd understand that um we talked about you're gonna tell a story about a man discovering his own humanity and so he's invited the audience to discover that guy's humanity too recalling he wrote upwards of 265 drafts of the series first nine episodes of which 10 total comprise the first season kane shared his excitement at the chance to put his own stamp on the bungee created universe there are, there are stories that are mentioned once in a book that i was able to give a whole backstory to and other characters that were already well written i just had to drop in i have to give credit to microsoft you can pitch them something completely brand new and unless it's complicated them in terms of canon or the values they embraced it the decision to split from the story was further touched upon uh by 343 industries early on we were thinking about doing something that could tie very closely with the game what we were finding was trying to verbatim stay with everything that had come before wasn't serving the medium 
It wasn't serving the creative teams and their need to express a story and build the world through their eyes. There it is. That's what it's about. The team that was assembled, right, to to make this story, they couldn't fit within the confines of the game's storyline. They couldn't stay within the continuity because they wanted to tell a story that was all about identity, politics, and social justice. That's the bottom line. We all can see this. You can tell from the very beginning when they started promoting this that that's what this was about. And now we're getting all the confirmation. That's the truth right there. It's not about simply just wanting to be creative. It's about you couldn't. The people you hired literally couldn't tell a story within the confines of the video games and the lore that's already established. That really begs the question, why even do it, right? Why even do this? Why make this story? Well, it's because you're using the Halo name to try to suck people in. You're using the Halo name to push your agenda and your identity politics. Admitting that he never played the game prior to joining the series, executive producer and director confessed, I was nervous. How do you take a first-person shooter and expand it? There's no way I was ever going to grasp the whole thing. So there was a lot of phone of friends. They were extraordinary in their acceptance of the fact that they couldn't just try to square peg round hole their 20 years of history. Gaming is a completely different medium. And I wanted to talk about this too because this is what they are doing. Like I said, we saw it from the beginning in that trailer. It looked like Master Chief might take a back role in his own story. How many times do people need to be tricked by this from Hollywood to realize it's just going to keep happening? Halo TV series to completely change Master Chief's character, focus on Quan Ah for human perspective. The Halo TV series has revealed that not only will their version of Master Chief be a near completely different version, but the heavily advertised teenage female lead Quan Ah will be a focus of the series as she provides a human perspective on the story. At the onset of the interview, Wolfkill explained to Kraus that the team had decided to set Halo in a new silver timeline, similar to concept in the J.J. Abrams Star Trek series, Kelvin Timeline, in order to allow them the opportunity to make changes to the franchise's continuity and original lore. Does, it, does that sound like a good idea? What, how was Star Trek received after that? How, since that happened, since that moment, since that movie, look at what has happened to Star Trek since then. You think that's a good template to follow? I don't know about that. From the very beginning, it was clear in order to let the story evolve and grow the way it needed to, we needed to make some changes. Yeah, she continued, sometimes it was even just a perspective change. Sometimes it was something you didn't get a view of from the game or even the books. We knew we needed to let the story breathe on its own. According to Krauss, one such example of a major major change is the fall of Reach, the covenant attack that wiped out most of humanity's Spartan soldiers and left Master Chief as one of the last, if not only surviving, result of the Earth's super soldier ambitions. In the games, that happens prior to humanity's discovery of the first ring, but in this series, the fall has not yet occurred, most likely to allow it to feature more Spartans, and I'm sure the Spartans will be very diverse and inclusive. The discussion then turned to the topic of the series' principal cast, but more specifically, Quan Ah, an original series character whose juxtaposition of her hatred of the Spartans against the necessity of fighting alongside Master Chief will serve as one of the Halo's main narrative focuses. She has an animosity against the Spartans. She begins as our eyes on the Spartans, what we expect them to be. As she learns more about them, her ideas will change. She stands in her own character as the outer planet who feels she's meant for something else. She's off on her own and has to discover what her true purpose in the galaxy is. Another thing we get from her is the human perspective of the Spartans. Quan is a grounded human perspective, which I think is definitely unique. But like we could all predict from simply watching that trailer, you are going to have a very important character, a different perspective on this story, which I think, again, we could all guess. As for Master Chief himself, Kane asserted his backstory would be one of the elements to be changed in the series jump from video games to TV. Changing Master Chief from the highly indoctrinated super soldier, brutally trained from childhood to fight on behalf of the United Nations Space Command, to a mindless automaton whose memory has been erased and has his emotions actively suppressed. Rather than viewing Master Chief's opaqueness as a hurdle, Halo makes the character ignorant of his past. Uh, His memory has been erased, like we just said. So the question, who is Master Chief, becomes a journey for Schreiber's character as well as the audience across the debut of the nine episodes as he finds himself defying orders to protect a young girl. The key is that Master Chief's a bit of a cipher. In the game, you are Master Chief. If you don't read the books, you don't know the backstory, but in general, he stands in for all of us as we play the game. So this is a chance to get under the hood, so to speak. 
this sounds like an absolute fucking disaster. Uh, I, I think the numbers are going to be really bad on this. I don't think it's going to get the attention they really thought it would. The critics are already very meh on it. Um, and some of the critic reviews do not sound fun. I saw Hogue Law posted this. Uh, this is a positive review, and this is how they say it. The biggest difference from the games is that Halo kickstarts immediately with Master Chief navigating an identity crisis. The super soldier's thoughts are bouncing between his role as a duty-bound, robocop-like galactic enforcer and becoming a fuzzy Terminator with a heart of gold. The stimulus for this self-awareness is the show's most contrived plot point, namely Chief's connection with the magic ancient stone, the modern MacGuffin. But the consequences of that internal crisis also provide the best source of rising tension between Master Chief's drawing sen or dawning sense of righteousness and the borderline fascist government of the United Nations Space Command. This is going to be a disaster. Let me know what you think about all this stuff in the comments below. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.